<clears throat> Thank you very much, Mike. Um, as you heard so eloquently stated by Dr. Klatz and also by Dr. Goldman this morning, we are indeed in a new and a very rapidly evolving field of medicine in the terms of genetic activation, genetic manipulation. And the title of my talk uh, and book, The Longevity Factor, uh, would seem a little presumptuous perhaps to some, but 17 years ago in Chicago, uh, Dr. Klatz and Dr. Goldman founded the A4M, and as you can see at the bottom, they stated that the human lifespan can be increased and the quality of one's life enhanced as one grows chronologically altered, older. Uh, this was certainly their belief at the time, and more and more people now have clearly accepted that. Why write a book on grapes, wine, and longevity? Well, as I've gotten older myself, I've taken a much greater interest, particularly in the longevity part. Everyone here who's a practitioner of medicine is extremely blessed, and I, perhaps more so than most, in what I've been able to do and what I do on a daily basis in terms of helping people. Uh, we're in the medical profession. There's a saying, we give but little when we give of our possessions. It's when we give of ourselves that we truly give. And we're in a position to do that daily with every patient encounter we have. As I mentioned yesterday morning, I and you are primarily in the business of disease care. But if the A4M is successful and you're successful in your practices, hopefully we'll evolve to health care. And in health care, as the new paradigm may be, I'm afraid there's not much I can do for you now. You should have come in sooner before you got sick. Uh, that's where we would like to be. But the question is, can we really do anything about prolonging life? Well, we know that nutrition, immunization, antibiotics, and improved hygiene have indeed increased lifespan by about 40 years since the time of the Industrial Revolution. Have we reached our limits? In National Geographic a few years ago, they looked into longevity and the various residents of Okinawa, Sardinia, Costa Rica, Loma Linda, uh, and Andorra and found that these individuals appeared to have a much longer lifespan, a significantly longer lifespan than most. And the common characteristics of all of these population groups was they generally had a very high vegetable, fruit-based diet, supplemented with fish. They worked hard, uh, and they also had very strong family units uh, and in, in terms of their spiritual and religious experiences. But if we look at the longest recorded human lifespan, Gene Calment and Antonio Todd, there also was another, in quotes, uh, secret to their longevity, according to them, uh, olive, olive oil, port wine, and red wine every day. So that's kind of a brief overview and introduction of longevity. What I now would like to do with you is share a story, a story of my own life over the last three years and the factors that impacted it tremendously to markedly change my own thinking, my own practice, and, uh, and my own endurance for that matter. Uh, in 2005, I attended a neurosurgical meeting in Boston, and David Sinclair, who is the head of the anti-aging laboratory at Harvard University, was invited to give a speaker. At neurosurgical meetings, uh, we frequently will have outside individuals and in other disciplines present so that they, the hope is to cross-fertilize the 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 neurosurgical and the neuroscience discipline. And as I sat in the audience listening to David Sinclair talk, uh, I really was astounded. He was talking about how with calorie restriction, 
we could reduce vascular disease, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, diabetes, osteoporosis, kidney failure, and cataracts. And I said, wait a minute, if it's, it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. So he then showed a slide on calorie restriction. And as I intimated yesterday, there's only one thing any of us can do at the present time to increase longevity, and that's markedly calorie restrict. And the first evidence of this was by Clive McKay, Clive McKay a, uh, an investigator at Cornell University in the 1930s, who took a group of animals, rats, he reduced their diet by 40%, but maintained them still nutritionally appropriate. And he found that these animals lived a third to 50% longer than their cohorts who were given a regular diet. And subsequently, over the years since 1935, the question was asked by other scientists, in what other organisms does calorie restriction work, is effective? And in all of those that you see on the slide, that was indeed the case. And I will show you an article out of that prestigious journal, Newsweek, which is going to be on the stands this week, in which an investigator at Washington University has been following a cohort of individuals who have been calorie restricting over 12 years. And to the monkey, where it says rally time, can be added a human being, as he's found a marked reduction also in those diseases most prevalent with aging. So the question, though, from 1935 on was, what happens when you calorie restrict? How does calorie restriction increase longevity?